One of the most important aspects of learning to play a musical instrument is learning how to practice effectively. So I'd like to talk to you about practice, focused practice. I would like to convince you today of the importance of two complementary and contrasting ways of practicing. Practicing assignments and maintaining review. When learning new pieces and when polishing older pieces, there should be very little playing through complete pieces. Children should focus just on the short assignments which their teacher has set to improve each piece. And balance that with lots of review, playing straight through repertoire, sometimes solo, sometimes with the recorded accompaniment for orchestral instruments, sometimes in unison with the hands separately or hands together or duet recording for pianists, sometimes with the metronome. Invent different ways of reviewing. Vary the speed, exaggerate the dynamics, change the articulation. For those of you with portable instruments, try playing a piece in every room in the house or sitting on a different chair for each piece. Children's musicianship is developed by reviewing old pieces. So children become more secure in playing and refine their technical and musical skills. This security forms a broad base on which to add new repertoire. This is where the Suzuki approach is so successful. Those children who make the best progress are those who maintain their past repertoire thoroughly. Maintaining review is made easier when children are listening to recordings of Suzuki repertoire and other good music for at least one or two hours each day. I recommend all pieces in the current book are played through, separate from being practiced, three times a week. Pieces in the previous book should be played twice a week and pieces in earlier books once a week. Of course, children's needs vary. Some need more repetitions than others. Discuss the frequency with your child's teacher. When playing through, children should not be interrupted. You parents should listen and make a mental or written note to practice the next day any that are a little untidy. And I strongly recommend you maintain a chart so everyone knows which pieces are to be played and which have been played. You could offer small rewards for completed charts. Review should always be played with the idea of improving each piece. Focusing on one point throughout the review practice is invaluable. For instance, posture, or bow hold, or flexible wrist, or tone, or rhythm. During holiday periods, when not having regular lessons, you could try the traffic, traffic light system. Store, score each review piece green if it's well played, amber if it's fairly good, or red if it's poor. Work hard to all the red pieces to bring them into the amber category. Then work hard to all the amber pieces to bring them to green. Or score each review piece one to five. One if it's very well played, five if it's rather poor. Over the next week, work on pieces which scored five, five times. Those which scored four, four times, three, three times, and so on. And the following week, score all the pieces again and see if several of them have improved. For fun, try playing all pieces in a major key, or all pieces in a minor key, or all pieces in duple time, or triple or quadruple, or play all dances, or all the songs, or all your sonatinas, or all your baroque pieces. If one piece is particularly rusty, Try listening to a recording of that piece perhaps 20 or 30 times a day. And pianists, in addition, practice the piece hand separately only for a week. You'll notice a real improvement. So that's review. When learning new pieces and polishing older ones, some principles of practice apply. Good practicing involves 
identifying and analysing problems, devising strategies and exercises to overcome the difficulties, repeating short sections while listening carefully for musical sounds, and the passage then needs to be thoughtfully put back into context. This is the assignment that your teacher would have identified and set in lesson for daily practice. I think there are four basic ways of practicing assignments. The four S's. Practicing short sections. Practicing hands separately. Possibly not relevant for non-pianists, though I suspect flautists could practice the breathing without the fingering, or the fingering without the breathing. String players can do bowing only, or fingers only. Practicing slowly, practicing with stops. When in doubt about how to practice, consider which of these might be the most useful. More on this later. Also consider which twinkle variation would be the most appropriate to help solve the problem. I asked one of my piano pupils to help me demonstrate. Zian is seven and started piano nearly three years ago. I'll show you a video. So at the piano, the ending of Allegretto 2 is quite difficult to play well. So we're going to work on the very last bit in the left hand. Zian, please could you play me with stops? Ready and. Ready and. Ready and. Ready and. Ready and. Ready and. Ready and ready and ready and ready and ready and beautiful big deep sounds with no stops. Let's do the third variation. Ready or five notes. Ready and. Twinkle theme on each note. Ready and beautiful. Now, one of the most useful strategies for practicing is backwards practice. So we're going to practice backwards. The last note, please, Zian. The last two notes. repetition plays a huge part in learning. Practice strategies often involve changing some aspect of the music. Let's continue with the last bar of Allegretto 2. We could vary the articulation, legato or staccato, or double staccato or triple staccato, or quadruple staccato. Let's play it legato. Excellent, really 
tricky doing those. We could vary the dynamics. We could play it very softly. Keeping the fingers close to the keys or lifting the fingers, playing it strongly. We could vary the speed. We could play it slowly. We've just demonstrated of the four S's playing a short section, playing one hand alone, playing slowly, practicing with stops. We've used twinkle variations, we've done backwards practice, we've varied the articulation, the dynamics, the speed, the rhythm, and we've used masses of repetition, perhaps 20 times, but it wasn't boring because it was different each time. This leads to a discussion of blocked versus random practice. This is an idea of Molly Gebrian. She plays the viola and is also a neuroscience researcher in America. What ZN has been doing with Allegretto 2 is blocked practice, and that's the way to start to consolidate a new skill. But this gives only the illusion of mastery. When playing a piece, we have to produce a high quality result immediately, not after several repetitions. So next is serial practice, to challenge the learner and to consolidate the skill. Take, for instance, five short passages in a piece, or in different pieces, and play the first passage, the second passage, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, and repeat in order. And if any is insecure, more block practice is required. When the serial practice is secure, take those five passages and play them in random order to test the ability to perform perfectly instantly. And research has shown that the brain works harder in random practice, but then less hard when performing a piece learned with random practice. So the piece is much more secure. I also recommend children get support by playing along with a recording or a metronome. Sometimes hands separately, sometimes hands together, sometimes slowly, sometimes up to speed. First benefiting from the support, the sound, the rhythm, the pulse, the continuity, the character, and then gradually removing the support. In lesson, this can be done with the teacher playing along, in practice with a parent, if they can play the piece, or even just sing or clap along, or with my hands separate and hands together piano recording, or with the standard Suzuki recording. Here's another video. Zian is going to work on the first section of a minuet in G minor. This can be done on one piano at home, if the parent plays, or it can be done with a recording of the music. Zian, can we please play the left hand? I'm going to play along with you. The left hand of G minor minuet. Ready? And. together, or we can play with the recording, while Zian plays just the left hand. Again, it could be done at one piano, but right now I'm going to play at my piano. Please put your left hand ready for G minor minuet. Ready, and... Right, 
Now this time, Zia, I'd like you to play your left hand all on your own with your eyes closed. Ready, and... hand so this time I'm going to play the right hand at your piano and you're going to you're going to watch my right hand okay ready and So there is a lot of repetition goes on, but repetition in a different way each time. You've played that left hand four times today, but each time we were doing it in a different way. I also recommend parents record their child playing a piece. Both listen to the recording. The child assesses first what was good and then what could be improved and then compare it with other recordings, the Suzuki recording, other professional performances, and then consider how to improve your child's performance. These are ways of making practice interesting for children and for parents, rather than just playing through pieces. Save that for review. My pupil Charles is going to help me demonstrate ways of practicing three specific issues. Charles is nine, he's a Suzuki violinist and he started piano with me just over two years ago. Here's my third video. Charles is going to help me demonstrate how to put a piece hands together in the early stages. First of all the pupil is going to learn to be able to play the piece perfectly, each hand separately. When it's really well learnt, right hand and left hand, I need to play the first chord. Please play the first chord, Charles. Ready? And. Beautiful. And with beginner pupils, one would repeat that many times, several times, every day in practice. Listen to the scrunch. Ready, and. That is beautiful tone and you're just rolling through, you're relaxing beautifully. Listen to the scrunch and lift the left hand. Listen to the right hand. Ready, and. Listen to this and stroke the next notes. Ready and so good. Listen, lift, stroke. Because the difficulty in much piano music is that one hand lifts and the other hand has to be legato. So when the left hand has to lift for the repeated chord, we don't want the right hand to lift like this. So we have to practice being legato in the right hand while the left hand lifts and plays again. So we're practicing, we're putting in stops, we're stopping every time we've got a little difficulty, we're adding an extra note or two at a time, we're listening really carefully to the sounds we're making, and there's lots and lots of repetition. Let's move into working on A and Alberti bass. What are the sounds of an Alberti bass? Strong, soft, medium, 
answer. Just like if you've got quadruple time, one, two, three, four, strong, soft, medium, soft. So, Charles, to make a nice big strong sound with Mr. Five on C, can you please play me? Ready, and. Beautiful, you're lifting your finger, you're energetic with your fingertip. Please play me. Ready, and. That was superb. Beautiful big ringing note sound at the bottom, lifting your finger well. Please play me. Ready, and. Very good, strong, and then a soft sound. So you're lifting your finger for a big strong sound here, and you've got your finger close here. Let's practice the thumb a bit more with variation three. Ready, and. Brilliant. Tiny little sounds, tiny little movements, just wibbling with your fingertip there for a soft sound. How about... Soft, medium, soft, soft. Ready, and. Ah, look at the way you're walking in. Your first thumb is here and your second thumb is further in. Ready, and. Very, very good. Now we're going to put a strong Mr. Five at the end. sounds we've got a soft one a medium soft a soft one and a strong keeping the fingers close to the keys and a big lift ready and bravo let's do several in a, in a row but waiting on mr five what you're doing there. Um, and then should we do it without the weights? Ready, and. And I'm starting with the softer ones and then the strong one because what's really difficult is after the strong one, make the soft one. So it's good to practice the soft bits and ending on the strong one. So we use twinkle variations to make the different sounds, to remind ourselves of the big sound, the big sound, or the small sound. So twinkle variations for the sounds, and we're, we're thinking smooth movements produce smooth sounds. Smooth movements produce smooth sounds. Let's think about balance between hands. Let's take Cradle Song. We want to, the melody to sing out. We're lifting our fingers. We want the left hand softer. And please play the right hand, lifting your fingers Squeezing the sound, ready, and beautiful. You are lifting, you are squeezing the sound, and then you're relaxing, you're rolling through to relax. You're watching your hand, because it helps if your eyes are focused there, and you're listening intently. One more time.
so close to the keys, that's exactly right. Could we even mime it? Ready, and... Fabulous. Okay, so let's just do it softly. And... Brilliant. Now that might be softer than we even need it, but if you can do that really softly, this really singing, then we can work out in due course exactly how we want the balance. Right, can we have the first note? Get ready for Cradle Song, the first note hands together. Please play. Ready, and. Beautiful. Ready, and. Fabulous. So one hand really close, one hand lifting up. And fabulous balance. Play me um, left hand alone, ready and right hand alone, ready and very nice. set children to do each of these tasks, you know, a week just doing the first note of the piece, or a week just doing the first few notes, a tiny little bit. Which hand is playing the strong sounds? Right hand. <laughs> Here is a heavy book. Imagine the weight of that as you're playing the piano. Just, I'm going to hold this a little bit over your hand, just playing the first four notes. Ready? And... Big, heavy, 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 heavy sounds. And the left hand, it's just a little, let's turn up on this, little light sound. Ready? And. So now imagine you've got both hands ready, please. I'll take these away, but just feel the weight of, the weight of that and the lightness. Ready? And. contrasting sounds. Um, so what are we doing? We're working on short sections, we're building in an awareness of how the two hands should sound, um, encouraging enormous listening and repetition, daily repetition many times. A book I strongly recommend reading is Daniel Coyle, The Little Book of Talent. He suggests 52 tips for improving skills. Coyle recommends playing with your eyes closed or blindfolded to increase awareness of the sound and the feel and to remove other distractions. Let me close my eyes. Just miming a passage on the piano, play without depressing the keys fully. On the violin or the flute, perhaps you could play with the fingers only. Watch, see if you can guess what piece I'm playing here. Here's the second phrase. I'm sure several of you guessed that was Lightly Row. He also suggests exaggerating. Exaggerate how strongly you play, or how softly you play, or how spikily you can play. Here's the middle of Twinkle theme. First, very strong, lifting my fingers well. 
and then followed by a very, very soft echo, keeping my fingers much closer to the keys. Another tip Coyle recommends is the sandwich technique to play a passage correctly, then play it the way you played it before, incorrectly, and then play it again correctly to develop an awareness of what needs to be changed. So if we take Allegro, four beats in a bar, strong, soft, medium, soft. But initially many students will play strong, 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 strong. So then we work at the strong, soft, medium, soft. But before it was but what we really need. Coyle talks about shrinking the space, practicing the smallest section that is meaningful several times rather than a longer section a few times. The ending of Minuet 2. triplet followed by the lovely interval of a seventh is quite tricky for pianists and I expect possibly for other instruments as well. We could practice twinkle variations variation three for softness double staccato single staccato or legato a little faster Coyle recommends counting the repetitions as being more satisfying than playing an indeterminate number of times so if your child is four years old they could repeat a passage four times if they're six they could repeat it six times. Or many children very much enjoy rolling a dice to determine how many times they're going to repeat a section. We could take the first note of Aunt Rhody. Just that very first note. Get ready, ready and and listen for the beautiful sound. Hand on lap, get ready, lift the finger well, ready, and... and then roll through to relax afterwards, ready, and... perhaps the child is four years old, we're going to do it a fourth time, ready, and... Each day try to build one perfect chunk. Make it 100% consistently correct. This may be just two notes or two bars. For instance, for pianists, playing with a pointy thumb, not a flat thumb, uh, with a strokey thumb, keeping the thumb tucked under, not sticking out, playing near the black notes, not on the edge of the keys, but near the black notes with a balanced hand. For instance, we could take long, long ago. If we just take the very first few notes, we want to play with a pointy thumb and a stroking thumb. If we take two notes, we want the pointy stroking thumb and then chiming, not but very legato. If we add one more note, Mr. Two, the second finger needs to be near the black notes, not back here, but near the black notes. And then we need to tuck our thumb under when we play the second finger. 
So many things to think about in just three notes, and we'll just repeat those three notes many times. For more advanced students, Coyle recommends watching a mental movie before going to sleep. Just imagine oneself playing through perhaps minuet one. Imagine the sounds, imagine the feel as one is playing it. interesting ways of practicing. Here's the slide showing what we've just covered. So we have two very different and important ways of practicing, assignments and review. For practicing the assignments, especially with young children, parents need to be there physically and mentally to help. To supervise. With review, parents need to be listening, but as your children get older, you can listen from a greater distance, but you must keep listening. And in the next practice, pick up any pieces which were insecure and devise interesting ways of practicing any bars which were tricky, which would include hand separately for pianists. I haven't today said much about listening, However, all practice, whether learning new pieces, polishing concert pieces, or maintaining review, will be much more successful when supported by lots of listening to Suzuki and other good music, to the order of one or two hours every day, as well as listening carefully to the sounds being produced when practicing. Only those who have the patience to do simple things perfectly can acquire the skill to do difficult things easily. And patience is a skill we have to help our children develop. Patience to work in detail on assignments, patience to play regularly through their repertoire. In this diagram, I've tried to show that good practice leads to progress. Progress leads to personal satisfaction and appreciation from others. This motivates students, and so they practice more. Suzuki children learn to master principles thoroughly and learn the principle that can be applied to any piece. For instance, how to maintain one hand legato while the other hand lifts in Mary Had a Little Lamb, but in any piece. For instance, how to play an effective musical Alberti bass in a book one piece or in a Mozart sonata. Also listening and having the technique to control the balance between hands in every piece. These principles will be mastered by working on tiny assignments, a few notes at a time. It has been suggested that 90% of all that children need technically is learned in the Twinkle Variations, certainly in the piano repertoire, and 95% is learned in Book One. So parents, encourage your children to keep practicing the Twinkle Variations and continue to refine them. And teachers encourage parents to encourage their children to keep practicing their twinkle variations and to keep reviewing book one and then book two and book three so they are played more and more musically. Work on technique is preparing pupils for where they want to go into the higher Suzuki books and beyond into all the great works of the music literature. There are lots of articles about practicing on my website also Suzuki recordings, also slow hand separate recordings. Also my video tutorials on how to study and practice pieces in piano books one to four. Also some practice charts, they're all on my website. And of course there's my book, Successful Practicing, a handbook for pupils, parents and music teachers. The first half discusses how to create a nurturing learning environment and the second half discusses different ways of practicing.